Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for putting up with us as we get mic check, mic check all figured out. This is webinar number 20 in a series of webinars for small business navigating the impacts of COVID-19. I'm Barbara Coffey, Director of Economic Initiatives for the City of Tucson. Leading off the panel today will be representatives from our State District Office of the U.S. Small Business Administration, followed by the Tucson Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. As always, we will take your questions as we go, so feel free to enter those in the chat box or the Q&A function, and we will get to as many of those as possible in our time this afternoon. We will keep all participants muted, so that helps as we have a large number of attendees, but we will record the session and make it available for everyone, and it's usually up uh, by tomorrow afternoon. You can find links to all previous webinars at connecttucson.com, and with that, I will get us started. So I'll introduce our first speakers. Jim Pipper is economic development and veteran business development officer with the Arizona District Office of the SBA. Jim is the district office program liaison for both the Arizona Boots to Business and Boots to Business reboot programs being delivered to all transitioning uniform personnel in Arizona by the Veteran Business Development Center, a program he's uniquely qualified for as he is a Vietnam era combat Air Force veteran. Jim is also the district international trade officer, Arizona statewide score liaison, on, District Surety Bond Guarantee Program Officer, and the Local Liaison for SBA with the U.S. Commercial Service. Prior work includes his role as Special Assets Officer with a commercial bank for five years, and he's also a former small business owner. Stephen Hart is the Tucson-based Small Business Administration's Senior Area Manager for Southern Arizona, and he has served in that role for the past 15 years. Stephen came to the job following a move from Washington, D.C., where he served as Deputy Assistant Secretary for Education and Cultural Affairs at the U.S. State Department. He also served as Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs at the U.S. Department of Transportation and was at the White House during the 1980s and 90s in press relations and legislative affairs positions. In the private sector, he was Senior Vice President at the Association of American Railroads and consulted with SBC Telecom on telecommunications on growth strategies in its successful efforts to purchase AT&T. And then rounding out the SBA group, Brian Quijada recently joined the Small Business Administration serving as an outreach and marketing specialist here in Tucson. Brian came to the SBA after serving as the Director of Rural Economic Development at Community Investment Corporation, where he assisted with financing and educational tools for entrepreneurs in rural Southern Arizona. Additionally, Brian spent 15 years in banking and financial services, specializing first in mortgage lending, followed by small business banking with Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, and Vantage West Credit Union. So that's a lot of experience, but a lot of business know-how. With that, Jim, I'm gonna ask you to get us started and, uh, and then take it from there, passing the baton to your team uh, as you go. So with that, welcome. Thanks, Jim. Hey. Well, Barbara, thank you for uh, hosting this and for having us join you today. We're uh, looking forward to building a continuing relationship with the city of Tucson, as always. And I hope what I hope to accomplish today is uh, uh, to for all of us to act as a clearinghouse for things that the community needs. That's the best way I can put it. Uh, and one of the things that uh, I, I learned a long time ago, I guess I learned it when I was in the Air Force, uh, uh, there's nothing that uh, isn't accomplished better by teaming with one another. Uh, everything in the military is always a, a team project for sure. So Barbara, again, thank you for what you're doing down there. I sent you some uh, recent emails uh, that I hope you can pass along to you to the community because uh, uh, all of us, all of us are feeling uh, the pinch of what's going on right now. And the best thing that we can do is uh, uh, join hands and collaborate with one another and share information and try to uh, pass along uh, the fact that uh, there is a lot of help uh, that's, that's available. Uh, and there's a lot of concern over how to access it and where to go and et cetera. And, uh, again, I think the best thing that we can do uh, today is, is be a, a clearinghouse for your questions and, and ultimately hope, hopefully get the answers you need and try to get some help to you. Uh, 
Uh, one of the uh, things that I've been doing, I've been with the SBA, as Barbara mentioned, for a long time, and I, I always hear the old rumor mill that gets going. And, and somebody have a problem, and the next thing you know, they tell the next person they had a problem, and then that person tells them, tells them they got a problem. Before you know it, uh, there's a, a real fictitious rumor mill that's gotten cranked up about uh, geez, I got a problem. So don't bother. Uh, one of the common problems that we hear about is, uh, you know, the banks aren't lending. There's there's no help out there. What can we do? And uh, that's just not true. Uh, the fact is that because of the COVID environment that we're in, the lending community is, is doing business differently like everybody else. Uh, but they are up and running. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the programs that just recently rolled out, and I'm going to have Brian. Uh, he's kind of our point person on some of the rural activity we have down uh, in Tucson and, and, in fact, in southern Arizona. And uh, one of the things, one of the, the programs that just recently re, uh, rolled out was a Community Advantage Recovery Loans. Uh, in the government, we like to use acronyms, so it's called CARL, C-A-R-L. Uh, recovery lenders, and there's, it's for specifically for uh, underserved markets, and there's two primary lenders that uh, are, have been designated to deliver those programs. One is Prostomis, uh, and the other is DreamSpring, and Brian's going to elaborate on those uh, as we, as when we get, get to his part of the, uh, today's session, but uh, I always like to also say uh, there is our resource partners uh, provide some very spot on assistance uh, for pivoting a lot of our businesses. And I'm sure that we all can feel it. And we see our businesses having to pivot every single day and do business a little bit different. Uh, and our resources that we have available are no cost or very low cost, very little cost. And Steve Hart, if we can get his mic working, is it working yet, Steve? Ah, uh, okay, okay. I'll end up uh, talking about that in a little bit if Steve can't get his mic working, but that's what I do want to talk about. But I thought before I get into those resources, I would like uh, your, our point person, Brian, to talk about that Carl program. That's going to be a big interest to everybody. And uh, so let's let's go with that. Can we back, go back and forth if it's okay, Barbara, with Brian? Absolutely, we can. So let's uh, let's see what happens here. Um, and Stephen, feel free to try to give us a shout. But I still see that there's been there. You know, I understand there's a little gremlin at work on the Zoom platform that's not just unique to Tucson. It's uh, some little glitches are happening worldwide. So I I'm going to blame it on that at this point. Um, it's not user error. I think we've all been doing this for way too long at this point. So Brian, with that, yes, absolutely, um, jump in. Okay, Brian. Okay, well, thank you for that. Uh, first, everyone, thank you for taking time to join us today. Uh, I will be uh, discussing uh, the, the features of the CARL program, and I'm also gonna take a little bit of time just to provide a, an update on the EIDL loan program that's still, in op that's still available. So first and foremost, as Jim mentioned, CARL, the Community Advantage Recovery Loan, it's a new program with a very limited window. It is available through the 27th of September. So it, uh, time is of the essence for those interested in this program. This program was developed uh, first to serve that underserved market. And this is a combo loan, if you will, that comes along with technical assistance. So Avail uh, loan amounts are available up to $250,000 with a 15 hour requirement with, uh, of um, technical assistance that would be provided to you by your lender. Now, what type of technical assistance? It is designed for you to reposition your business model to accommodate this current COVID environment. Uh, there's no limitation, but it's to pivot your business, perhaps shift to an online presence, uh, get ideas to build cash reserves and uh, cost reduction strategies. Uh, the participating lenders, as Jim mentioned, is DreamSpring and Prestamos here in Southern Arizona. Uh, it is your typical uh, SBA loan, so it will be full doc. Uh, you, uh, you discuss with your lender your, the, the financial package that you will need to provide them. 
but it just uh, it's something to an expectation to set. Also, I do want to point out that for those businesses who may not need the loan itself, but do need the technical assistance, you do not need the loan to obtain technical assistance. This service, those services are offered free through your local, through our local resource partners, such as the Small Business Development Center, SCORE, and the Women's Business Center. So it's a great opportunity, but as I mentioned, uh, it is a uh, small time time window, so uh, we need, they need to be in before September 27th. On that note, I'm also going to discuss briefly the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, IDLE, which many of you are probably more familiar with. Um, it's been, it's been available since March and applications are accepted now through the end of the year. The loan advance that was uh, available up to $10,000, that is no longer available. Those funds have been exhausted. Um, and so if anyone ha is, has applied or is going to apply or perhaps is working with someone, I just wanna provide some updates that were recent. I did volunteer with the Office of Disaster Assistance for two months, so I do want to provide some feedback and best practices for, for, for you all. Uh, currently, the time frame for these um, loans to be processed is averaging about 60 days. Uh, once you submit an application, it may take a couple weeks before you hear from a loan officer, but once you are assigned a loan officer, it's very important to respond to them within a timely manner. They typically provide give you seven days so just be cognizant and check your junk mail just in case that email happens to go there. And if you do need more time to collect documents within that seven day period, just let that loan officer know so that they keep your file active. Also, uh, banking information, uh, you're not providing really any, any documentation up front except for banking when you submit your application. Ensure that it is um, submitted accurately as it appears on your check and do provide a check copy to your loan officer to avoid any funding delays towards the end. It's become, it's something that's uh, been a little bit more common. Um, also, if uh, your borrower or anyone that's applying is aware of having of any credit freeze on their, with their credit bureau, just know that you can either temporarily remove it when you submit your application or expect your loan officer to make that request for a temporary removal just to verify your credit. Uh, lastly, uh, if you have had an application that was declined or withdrawn, you can submit for a reconsideration within 60 days. Uh, I can provide this email in the chat box, but it is pdc.reconsideration at sba.gov. And um, again, customer service, if you have an active loan or have questions on it, feel free to contact customer service and or uh, through the telephone line or an email address. And again, I could provide that in the chat in the chat box so everyone can have that readily available. That's awesome. Jim, back to you. Uh, Brian, let me ask a question real quick, just as I know uh, some may have been familiar with the program when it first came out, um, and you made that clarification while the EIDL program does not allow the advance anymore, it does work like a loan program. Is there any special criteria or program information maybe uh, as an update that would be important for people to know? Well, in essence that, the, so the economic injury as it's referred to the total amount that one qualifies for, a portion of that was set aside and as, a, as the low, as the advance, the grant portion. Now, obviously it's all available in the form of a loan. Um, in terms of that's really the biggest update currently is the fact that that advance is unavailable. Um, but there is still plenty of loan funds, but it is time is of the essence. So uh, they are being um, processed first come first serve. So even though it's available through the end of the year, it's, it's best to apply now. That's an important piece. So um, I appreciate that. I know early on and maybe, you know, any one of you can comment on this, but we've had, you know, everyone who was, let's say, um, successful with the PPP program, now they're into um, compliance, right? Um, have, you, have you found any compliance issues? Have businesses had uh, any struggles with that? Or are there some tidbits for how to navigate uh, compliance of, a current, of someone who might have a current PPP loan? Either Brian or Jim. Can you hear me? I, this is Steve. Oh, Steve, I got you. 
got you. <laughs> I can do it by the phone, but not the other way. It's meant to be. Uh, Maybe you have the answer to this question. All right. Well, you know, it's it's a question that's being asked a lot. Uh, there's a lot of guidance out, um, and it is really going to require a lot of attention to this guidance. This is a new program for the country, uh, certainly for SBA. Uh, there have been a number of updates over time as questions have been asked and as the law has changed. The best resource at the moment uh, is really through our Small Business Development Center and through SCORE. They both, especially the SBDC, they have two former bankers on staff, so they're very cued in to this type of process, although forgiveness is completely new. Uh, but that's a resource that we'll, we may talk about a little later. Um, it is complex. It requires very good and detailed records. Uh, I encourage people, even though the window is open for 24 weeks now, to keep those records and go through the online applications, which are available through many of the bank, uh, in, in general terms, through many of the bank uh, online windows. And even though the banks may not yet be processing these, I think it's prudent to, well, this knowledge is fresh in the mind of small businesses to summarize that now so you're not trying to exhume this later. Um, we're all trying as best we can to help with these, but ultimately, this is something, a conversation and applications that will be arbitrated through the banks. They're the ones that will process the forgiveness applications. I hope that answers your question. That's great. And and I, I think I read something that there may be some more leniency in terms of the hiring back of employees. Is that the case for the PPP? Barbara, uh, I'll, take, yeah. I'll take that one. Is that okay, Steve, or you want to? Go ahead, Steve. Certainly. No, certainly. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, there, there's a lot of things that are, are being uh, tossed about with regard to it, your question, Barbara. The best uh, thing we've been able to do is we provide all of our lenders, every single PPP lender in the country, every one of them, including our Arizona lenders, with the most up-to-date information on the program as we get it delivered. Uh, Unfortunately, right now, as we all know, uh, their, their Congress is still trying to uh, iron out some differences, and we're all standing by waiting for things like uh, more information on the forgiveness feature. But the banks, uh, as recently as just uh, Friday, they were all given current uh, information on in terms of what we have available right now, Barbara. So if, if anyone has received a PP, PPP loan, uh, go to back to their lender and talk directly to their lenders, and they should be able to give them some direct hands-on assistance. Okay, now that's great. Might add something additional. That's great advice. Um, so again, and I, I'm encouraging everyone to um, to certainly enter your questions if you have them. Um, I'm going to take a look here to make sure I'm not missing up anything. Uh, or messing or missing any questions, but it looks like there's a lot of hellos and a lot of people who have, I guess, interacted with you and they're giving you uh, uh, some shout outs. So that's a good thing. Um, good, to, good to hear, good to see them on, the, on this too. It's a, so yeah. it looks like your, your boots to business experience uh, has been helpful to some. Do you want to talk a little bit about the programs that are veteran related? Sure. Uh, a, a real quick thumbnail sketch. Uh, the program rolled out in 2011 when our troops were being uh, drawn down and uh, they were being pushed out into a soft job market and, and someone came up with the idea to uh, give them some training as they transitioned out of the military service. And that has now evolved into a full-blown uh, program that not only is delivered to the uniform personnel, every, every branch, every base worldwide, uh, but it's also uh, delivered to the veterans and Arizona is home to over 700,000 veterans and we estimate there's approximately somewhere in the neighborhood of 100,000 veteran businesses in, in place. Uh, and so we rolled out a sister program called Boots of Business Reboot 
uh, because some of those veterans like myself, I, I separated, uh, I did not retire from the Air Force. Uh, so when I separated, I had to turn in my base uh, access card. And it's very difficult to get uh, veterans back onto like Davis Mothin uh, or even over at the guard unit there by the airport. And uh, so we put on uh, reboot sessions, which are very similar with uh, our small business development centers, our score chapters, and those are things that uh, we're going to elaborate on in a little bit. But that's kind of a quick thumbnail sketch for the veterans. I'm the state veteran guy, as you, as you read in my bio, and I, I've been known to help veterans in any way that I can, family members as well, and it's a great program. Uh, but Barbara, I also want to take this opportunity to mention, I, I sent you Friday, I sent you uh, the information on the Arizona Small Business Rent and Mortgage Relief Grant. Uh, that is a $10 million grant that uh, came from the governor under executive order 2020-43. So it goes up to $25,000. Uh, it's an opportunity for, uh, especially in our underserved markets, uh, for them to get some relief with uh, rent and mortgage payments and so forth. Uh, you have the link and have you been able to get that out yet, Barbara? It just hit Friday. Yes, it was actually in our email newsletter this morning when we did the reminder on the webinar today and we included that information. I believe Local First is uh, yes. helping us there. And so definitely if you're a small business owner still needing some funding, that's a great opportunity to have uh, because it is a grant program, uh, the way I understand it. Uh, a lot of businesses are still looking at, I just talked to one today that's looking at, uh, you know, uh, their rent and mortgage uh, obligations and, you know, they're, they're wondering, okay, what, what's out there? Well, there's, there's a hot potato that just hit uh, and it's going to go fast. I'll, I'll tell you right now. I talked to our, uh, our representatives at Local First Arizona and they're, uh, they're very enthused about it, but they told me to tell everybody it's going to go very fast. So uh, thank you, for Barbara, for getting that out. Uh, uh, I'm going to let Stephen uh, take up the, the slack here and talk about our, our score units. Uh, I will tell you before I pass it to Stephen that I just sent you today, Barbara, uh, what our score uh, Phoenix chapter is doing. Uh, they have a, they just rolled out today a business model canvas that that's always of interest to the business community. Uh, business model canvas, not a business plan. Uh, if you have to write a 30 page business plan, you're probably in trouble. So they've condensed it, put, put it uh, together. Uh, the second course is mastering your online presence using the internet and digital marketing for shifting on, on their sales and, and how to uh, increase their revenues. Uh, folks have had to learn how to, uh, uh, for example, like the restaurants, uh, you know, have drive up service, a uh, delivery service. Uh, we, we even, our, my family's enjoyed a pizza that, you know, they shut down and, you know, it's easier to get a pizza from them now than it was when they were open. <laughs> so that's kind of uh, the next course is on eight and you have this information, Barbara, and if you'd pass it along, I'd sure appreciate it. Uh, uh, third course is financials and funding, uh, and then how to start a business. A lot of people, believe it or not, are still looking at that opportunity that is the American dream to start a business, even under COVID right now. Uh, yeah. But it's more important than ever for them to get some help. And uh, that's one of the things Stephen's going to talk about. This is one of the three chapters. This is a Phoenix chapter. And thanks to things like we're talking on right now, none of us have to go drive anywhere. We can sit in our jammies and attend these sessions and get solid information. Uh, it's kind of a blessing that has come to all of us. So well, that you have some very nice jammies then, if that's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I I'll make sure my I'll make sure my wife uh, picks up that comment, my wife. <laughs> uh, and my, my friends at the Hispanic community that's going to be on later, you know, there's a, there's a great event going on in, down in Sierra Vista. I sent that to you this morning, Barbara, uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, from the Hispanic community. Have you seen that, by the way? Uh, she's shaking her head. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, I appreciate that. There are so many resources. And I remember when we started these webinars, we were scratching to try to make sure, you know, we could find the ones. But now it seems like there's some new things opening up. And I think that's great. So hopefully it helps 
make up for some it's of the coming together now. It it is. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Okay, Stephen, you want to you want to talk yeah. about what uh, uh, Two Sound Score is doing? Well, the Two Sound Score, uh, you can find them online at uh, Southern Arizona score southern arizona dot org. Um, they do have uh, access to two options when you get on that website. One is to look at the scheduled events, and Jim has gone through most of those. I do encourage you, th these are national uh, content as well. And then there's a mentoring option, and the mentoring option is terrific. It, it offers access to both local and national counselors. So for local folks who are extremely talented, don't know something, uh, they can work with a, a business to connect virtually with a counselor in Chicago or Houston. Uh, and I, would, I, I like to say who better to talk to than a, when, when you're going through a uh, lease document than a former commercial leasing uh, individual. So it's something to think about. They're, they're very talented. Uh, they're local, so you're their neighbors, and, and like the rest of us from Tucson and, and within Arizona, we all care that you succeed. Um, so th that's the best, uh, aside from what Jim has already mentioned, that's your best route uh, to both receive the free counseling and, and then access the online networking and, and workshops. We also have the Small Business Development Center here, which is probably integrated better than any other of the SBA resources uh, into the community. Uh, most of you have or should know uh, Ellen Curtin. She has a great team, as I mentioned earlier. They have a, Ellen is a banker and Karen, who is also on the team, is a former banker, both small businesses, small business bankers. So they're very gifted in really assessing and quantifying and helping with everything from loan applications to refinancing, those type of things. And they also know the community very well, the banking community. It's a very intimate uh, kind of society in the banking community and they're hooked in. Um, they offer something that I think uh, folks may not have heard about, which is a profit mastery course. Now the profit mastery course is one for folks who are in business looking to, to move out of the momentary day-to-day -day challenges which are so consuming and focus on the future and try and set a roadmap to frankly profit mastery. I encourage you to look into that. Um, just to wrap it up, um, we have the small, uh, sorry, the Women's Business Center, which I think probably everybody knows about through the YWCA. Uh, Francisca there and her team offer again free counseling they have offered uh, a series of courses on everything from QuickBooks to how to write a business plan to financial literacy. They aim at underserved populations, communities. Um, the other benefit that I, I think is worth mentioning is that the YWCA as a nonprofit is so uh, involved in the community and in grant processes that uh, if you become involved with them, you automatically en enter a very dynamic and very uh, cohesive network. Uh, and networking is one of the greatest ways to get new business. Uh, there are other things to mention, but I, I think that's a quick summary. Uh, I will mention that the Arizona SBDC network has a listing of all of the workshops that are going on. They draw nationally, and then of course they do this locally. And uh, I'll let whoever wants to find that. It's very simple to do on your own. Excellent. No, I appreciate that, and I do. Um, I do know Ellen Curtin is on today. Um, so so pleased she's here. She has been a fixture on our webinars, and she's helped our office, our team, um, immensely as we've referred a lot of people to our SBDC office here in Tucson. So thanks, Ellen, and all our partners. I know I see Krista from the Arizona Commerce Authority on, and of course, uh, we've had some work with, with our SCORE uh, counselors. Uh, Carol Shaughnessy was helping us out. And so yeah. I will just reiterate that it's free counseling. And so that opportunity to talk with a, uh, an experienced business professional to help you wherever you are in the journey is, is is invaluable, right? So I appreciate that. 
Um, and what I think I'll do, because you also brought an, another good point up about that networking, right? When you talked about the YWCA and the ways that you can just begin to engage and, and to help your business, what better way than to build more relationships. And so perfect to talk about that now. I would like to introduce our next oh. panel. And then we'll come back, like save all your questions, everyone. Keep sending them in because we'll we'll have time still for more questions. But That's I'll good. Yep. So next up, Isabel Georgelos is interim president and CEO of the Tucson Hispanic Chamber, and she's a Tucson native. She brings years of corporate leadership experience, having worked for top retailers in the country. Isabel takes very seriously her role in assisting small business, one that has her advocating, guiding, and delivering resources that help our small business community. Isabel is a first-generation Mexican-American with a passion to serve the Hispanic business community here in Tucson and to help all our small businesses thrive. Isabel, thank you so much for joining us, and I'm going to turn things over to you. Uh, and I'm excited that you're here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. It is great to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And it's nice to be on this panel um, with this wealth of knowledge and experience. And I, I have to say really quickly, um, I echo uh, James' words about collaboration. I think that's the key right now is continuing to work together uh, and amplify each other's messaging out in the community because we're all striving for the same thing to help our, you know, our community stay health, healthy and safe, but also economic uh, recovery. So thank you for allowing me to be here. Um, a couple of things I wanted to share uh, right now, and you, you, you brought it up, so I'm going to share my screen if that's okay, uh, Barbara. Oh, let's see here. Let's get this. Like you said, it's been a day of, of technical uh, challenges, but here we go. So I'm going to quickly start us at the beginning here. Good. Uh, so um, to start, uh, you mentioned about networking and just, again, some of the things that have changed for us. And this is just a quick slide talking about that in terms of you know, chambers and what we were doing before. And, you know, one of the things that I know we can all relate to is the fact that where did the chamber lobby go? You know, it's like that, that hub of activity that existed, you know, information. Um, we were custodians of local information when you think about it, business owners who were just starting uh, or those who were looking to grow and scale, coming and bringing their information so we could share with the community part of, you know, think about it, welcome packets, everything that somehow, you know, in this time has kind of gone by the wayside resources, being able to re refer, you know, um, uh, people to SCORE, to SBA. We get calls for everything from, you know, where should um, if I'm looking for a loan or to start a business or what courses are available, those are the things that people were walking into our office to, to ask about. And then of course, networking activities, we were creating you know, forums, events, energy, where people would interact and meet and, and start to build their networks. It, this was the place to plug in. Um, then you know, think about flyers, business cards, you know, not to mention handshaking and being able to visit businesses and, you know, and, you know, talk to potentially new clients and, you know, what that looks like today, offices are closed. Safety guidelines, you know, we're adhering to safety guidelines. I've got my mask over here, you know, I mean, we, we're all following these new guidelines and, you know, virtual interactions are different. We're, yeah, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, uh, virtual interactions are different. Even in this forum, we're looking for ways to reach through the screen and engage and create, start to create new relationships and interactions. Uh, think about online purchasing and what's happening, digital meetings, uh, and reduce traffic and obviously the opportunity for clients. So what to do? And that's where we here at the chamber uh, took advantage of this period to look internally and look at how do we start to create resources that are going to support our community and thinking about whether or not how long this takes to subside, the reality is what can we do and what have been some of the needs that have been identified for our members in the community and one of the things we saw right away uh, from, 
support from creating that support was the need to was the need to build capability um, to support our members through transition to virtual. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to report that our team uh, was was jumped on that right away. We um, you know we're early adopters and we were able to initiate virtual uh, settings for our members to begin to learn to interact, how to behave on a on a Zoom meeting, how to set one up. Um, and you know there's less there's programs that are available, but again we still had that need to fill of people actually coming in and connecting with us at the chamber. And along with that, um, we identified the gap there was in as many as we would think would be doing business online, they weren't. And so how to fill that need, how to help people transition uh, in a time where, you know, funds are restricted for everyone. And that's where we started focusing on creating a virtual platform, a centralized place for, local, for a local search engine. Um, we wanted to provide a service to support our small business owners. Um, they don't have time. They don't have time to sit behind a computer and try and create an, a, an, a, a landing page or a website. They, they're, they're too busy trying to save their business. So how do we help them? How do we provide documentation assistance that can that if they know we're going to take care of it for them, they'll be able to continue to focus on growing their business and making those tough decisions. Uh, and so that's where we went to uh, something we've been working with our partners um, that serve our chamber um, is creating a service, a complete service for our members um, that would allow them to do that, um, to create um, some things for the future, online shopping and purchasing, you know, a messaging out. Uh, you know, people communicate different ways. And so we're trying to make sure we're, we're connecting the dots with all of those, with text messaging, with emails, um, with pushing out marketing information. And I'm pleased to show and share that we have what's called Open for Business. And what it is, is a place where we can help um, our members and community build, uh, and we build their, their landing page. From that, um, they'll be able to market. They can create electronic business cards and texting. Um, and for that is, again, when you think about right now, the thank you, thank you, thank you, teams. Um, right now, people aren't ha passing out cards. There's that awareness of what, you know, what could be uh, a, a conveyor of, of pandemic. So, um, we're creating, helping people create that. Um, we can help them uh, get listed in more places and partnerships. There's actually, re actual reporting we'll provide that they'll receive on a monthly basis so they can see the impact of how many times they're being um, uh, checked into um, and clicked on. They'll be able to see that. And it, that ROI report will be available online and will also be pushed out. Online shopping, uh, when you think about some, uh, some businesses weren't ready for even curbside service, uh, weren't ready to process transactions without exchange of money. A lot of businesses, especially small businesses, you know, um, were cash, cash driven. Um, so this is helping to, with that transition. And of course, the benefit of the documentation assistance, we are doing it for you. Our chamber team is small in our office, but we have an IT uh, partnership in which we are able to do, take on that challenge for our members and help them because again, they're focused on doing business. Uh, and this is just a way that we can help. So the, the actual uh, platform is already up and running. We've already um, gotten a nice response um, it also includes a directory of all our members, so they can go in there and you can see, and again, the whole mission behind it is to create, uh, help bring that chamber lobby into the online and create digital footprint for our businesses uh, and help our local businesses uh, uh, help people find them. Because at the end of the day, that's what we need. The other beauty is, you know, understanding the fact that, um, you don't have, you can do business now anywhere. And, you know, that's the plus side. Uh, and also, too, helping uh, businesses that do want to start 
there are businesses that want to start again. We are holding classes for self-employment uh, so that we can take them through those fundamentals. And of course, absolutely, we refer them to SBA. Um, we connect with Ellen, you know, um, at the SBDC. We want to, uh, you know, we're still that hub where people come to find out how do I, what steps do I take? Where do I go? Where do I go? We create, yeah, for you too. We create that initial, you know, building of knowledge and resources and really help people kind of discern, okay, is this a business opportunity or an idea? Which is it? And then, okay, what steps do I go here? And, because the other big piece that we recognize through this pandemic, and it goes back to the, the to the relief funds and everything else, is that there were many successful businesses in our community that are unfortunately did not have the right infrastructure set in place, either from a you know from business license not properly set up, banking, um, you know, payroll records, the things that they would need. And of course, that's been the other big mission is to help these businesses connect with the right resources, the ones we provide along with where they can find them so that they are ready for the next phase. Because as we continue to see, um, things will continue to happen. Resources will continue to become available. You just mentioned Carl. You know, that's for, you know, again, those are things that we need to help these businesses be ready to then apply for. Uh, and in the interim, still do business. So. Um, I am really appreciative of the opportunity to share our open to business program that we are offering our business, not only our members, but the community as a whole. Um, they can join at a, at a reduced rate and take advantage. Um, but um, again, we're trying to form this community together. Um, I'm also very happy to report we've had some, some uh, sponsors uh, submit monies for business owners that didn't have it. So we've been able to create um, the platforms for businesses that didn't have it. Uh, and we'll continue to do so as long uh, as long as we can all continue to work together. I think you know we're going to help our community work together, get them connected with the right resources, and is this how we start? Fantastic! What an amazing value. Mm -hmm. I think that um, that you as an organization took the opportunity to pivot, if that's the word we'll continue to use, um, and really. So you know, created that platform for business. And so um, I think that's fantastic. And when we think about um, increasing our networks and businesses trying to find another audience or building their customer base, why not uh, take advantage of what our chambers of commerce have to offer? And so I think the Tucson Hispanic Chamber is right on the mark with that. Um, and again, just keep looking for those organizations and those avenues uh, to expand your network. Um, what a great opportunity. And apparently Carl's, I hope he's a really nice guy. Sounds like he's going to be, but, uh, you know, we'll, find out, right? we'll you, find out. You love oh, it. Yeah. The government gives you an acronym. That's a name you can actually remember, uh, you know, <laughs> don't ask me what it stands for again. Community. <laughs> uh, but yes, and we've had partners, uh, from, um, uh, with Prestamos on uh, just recently, and uh, and so I hear that DreamSpring and Prestamos, uh, the uh, CPLC uh, loan folks, are assisting with uh, with that. So that's great. Barbara, I'm gonna help you out. Okay, one more time. It stands for Community Advantage Recovery Loans. Recovery. There we that's go. What we're all talking about here is community recovery, right? Yes. That's precisely what we're talking about. So. So, question for Isabel, though, as you think about maybe your businesses um, that you've had some contact with over these last few months, helping them go through some of this, what are you hearing from them? What are their biggest challenges that maybe our Hispanic business owners in particular are facing? What would you say? For our community, uh, th there was a reluctance to apply for some of the funds because the, you know, the uncertainty and not wanting to get into greater debt. Uh, and some businesses are seeing, uh, th so obviously the opportunity was how do I get into PPP and when that couldn't be found, you know, what else can I do because of the reluctance to, to get into greater debt. Um, I think education is always a key piece when you learn that some of these funds, even if you did idle or something, the, you know, the, the interest rate and how that would work, um, that is important to understand as well, because there was a time where you have the ability to recover and then get into a payment plan and so forth. 
And so I think the, the biggest opportunity is always, again, how do you provide this information in Spanish? How do you make it accessible? Um, we just partnered last week with um, uh, Magdalena Verdugo over at YWCA and her team in getting the information out on the uh, Somos Uno uh, program, uh, grant program. And, you know, again, you'd be surprised how many people aren't aware. So it's about more than anything is the messaging and amplifying it, um, you know. Uh, James mentioned we're doing things in, in Sierra Vista in Southeast um, Arizona because again, it's about sharing the information and getting it out there so they know what those resources are. I did take a minute to go online and maybe I missed it, but I didn't see anything in Spanish on Carl. Um, so if I missed it, I did, let I me did. know. Yeah. So um, that's an opportunity where maybe we can collaborate and put some information out in Spanish again so you're reaching the community that might be impacted by it. Uh, but I think that's the biggest thing. And the other is, you know, where are they? You know, we talked about our lesson as a chamber is learning where is our community going to get their information? And, you know, uh, social media is a huge place where they're getting a lot of information. And so, so how do we get it out there so that our families are hearing them, our families' kids are hearing them, so that all of them are talking about it and saying, hey, do we need to take advantage of this? Because in our particular community, we, we communicate as a family and we talk about these things and we share them together. So in some cases, you've got you know, the young adults sharing this with their parents and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So um, it is about making sure the message is going, reaching the right people that are going to be able to take advantage and use it. That's been our biggest learning and that's why we're continuing to strive to get information out in all channels. Great. No, I appreciate that. And, you know, I wondered as you were talking and the concerns around debt and whether they, you know, want to have more debt, what would you say, any of you who have a thought on this, what is a small business owner thinking when it comes to that? Or what is good debt? Is there good debt? Is there bad debt? Is there something that would help someone decide when it's really appropriate? Um, and, and maybe there is a fear uh, right now for that extra, um, you know, taking on that extra liability, but what would you say? Anyone? I think, uh, honestly, it's unique to each person and that's a, that doesn't, that's not a cop out, but, um, for, uh, for me anyway, and maybe Jim or Brian can offer something different. Uh, it's very difficult to answer those questions. And, uh, you know, that, that scares everybody. It scares me as a, as a, consumer and as a mortgage holder uh, and taking on more is not an easy prospect and it really I think requires an assessment of well the intangible now as to whether or not you're going to survive whether or not you're going to be able to expand your business and whether or not your revenues will support added debt and uh, that's about all I can offer is the uniqueness of each individual's challenge we want to be helpful to that we do have these great resources that can help assess the financial healthiness of a business to help answer that question. Great. No, that's fantastic. And again, I, go ahead. Sorry, Barbara. I was just going to say, I think another factor though is, um, you know, understanding what are the trends in terms of businesses, you know, what can they count on? What do they see ahead? You know, if they can see that there's this trend where, it, you know, I'm going to be able to operate and stay open in terms of, you know, how we're navigating this time, I think that's a factor in making that decision, you know, um, because I think what we're all experiencing is that reduced traffic and clients. And so, um, again, we go back to how do you, you, I think one of you said it is like, how do you start to do business differently or how are you reaching different clients and so forth? Uh, because I think that will be a factor. And, and again, continue to educate and inform. This is how you can, you can plan for this, or this might be the better time. Maybe in, maybe in, in April, it wasn't a good time for you to take out, take, apply for that idol, but now it is because the window has reduced the time, you know, you'll have more time, but yet business is better, or you're, you're actually open and can see a projection there. So this might be a better time for you to evaluate whether this is right for you. And I think that's where we can amplify the message of these resources are still available. You know, let's connect. Um, here, here is who is offering it. 
Um, and again, getting it out in, in English and in Spanish so people are aware. That's Barbara, can I add just one more thing? I, um, as, as Townsing as it may seem to take on debt, right now, uh, the government has set these programs up in such a way that the terms are pretty good. And so uh, in different times of, of a business's experience and dealing with traditional programs, the interest rates are four or five times higher in some cases. So uh, take that, I would only offer that that ought to be taken into account. Uh, some businesses are prepared to grow that have been able to adapt or are looking to adapt. And this may be a resource uh, as opposed to a burden. Now, again, everybody has to answer that self for themselves. Excuse me, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Excellent. No, I would, what I want to do is give you a chance as a wrap up. And Brian, Brian, I'll put you on the spot first if you, uh, if you're game. Um, maybe three words or short phrases, but three things, three words that come to mind to share with a small business owner that they should be thinking about as we move through this uh, latter part of the year, uh, 2020. What are three things that you feel a business owner needs to be paying attention to or to be mindful of? Brian? Well, um, it, it, uh, it is definitely gonna be catered to each individual business or industry, if you will. But there's also the question of seasonality. If they're running, if they're coming into their low season, how can they conserve their cash reserves at this point? And how and what can they do, if possible, to pivot their business during the the low season? Additionally, with high season, and if they are struggling with perhaps obtaining their inventory of their product, are they in preparation to do so? Those would be some of the the high concerns and so forth. How are they preparing for the the end of the year, depending on seasonality? Additionally, um, you know, those who, who were recipients of idle, there is a 12 month uh, forbearance, I'm sorry, not forbearance, deferment on payments. So even though um, the first ones are probably going to hit in March, how are they, what are they doing and how are they preparing for those debt payments that are going to start to become due in the near future? Other lenders may have given them a grace period as well to defer payments. So the time is slowly coming upon them. So just setting those plans up. And if, again, uh, not many know of the great resources in the community, such as our, our resource partners, and it's, this is a time to reach out to them to get those ideas on how they can strategize for, for the, the, coming, the coming months. Great. Steve, what would you have to add to that? I got five. There is help. Please ask. There you go. <laughs> No, and that's a hard thing for people to do, and I'm included in that, you know, asking for help and just realizing that it's okay to not know, right, and to go and, and find someone who does. Uh, Jim, how about you? Get help, get help, and get help. And it is a hard thing for a lot of people to do. Uh, and it's the best suggestion I can give you is don't try to make these decisions with a loan decision, uh, pivoting decision, uh, financial or not, what, whatever, whatever is, is troubling uh, someone, please take a moment to ask for help. There's a lot of help out there. And before I forget, uh, Brian, you and, you and Isabel, please get together uh, as far as the translation goes on that uh, Carl alone. How, how about that? Isabel, you offered. Of course. <laughs> okay, course. Brian's right there. So there you go. And you don't have to, you can do it in your jammies, Brian. <laughs> you have my permission. <laughs> and so Isabel, we'll, we'll end with you. What do you think? What's your advice to business right now? I, I think I echo everybody's is um, ask for help. Take advantage of the resources. They're here. If you don't see something that you think or you don't think you qualify, don't stop there. Ask because you'd be surprised. Um, each day we find new information and it's going to continue to come forward. So um, don't stop and don't give up. Yeah, awesome. yeah don't give up. What a great way to end. So we'll wrap up things together. I, I don't see any more questions, uh, but certainly if you have them still, please reach out to us. So I wanna thank all of our speakers. Thank you all for 
spending your afternoon with us here for a little while and sharing uh, your expertise. I appreciate that. Uh, and don't forget, as some, I think Isabel mentioned, our We Are One Somos Uno Resiliency Fund small business and nonprofit continuity grants are still available. There are also grants for workers and families. So links are on our website at connecttucson.com if you need to uh, go there in order to find those uh, programs. And then we still have great uh, marketing programs like uh, the My Hound uh, opportunity for businesses to promote themselves. So we hope that you'll take advantage of some of these things. So we're wrapping up, but we'll be back um, in two weeks. We're actually going to take off the next two Mondays and come back with a panel on September 14. So you get a little back to school reprieve in Labor Day, but uh, we'll be back on September 14th and we will have a crew from our city team. Uh, we're going to talk about our visual improvement program, which is a really great new grant program designed to help business owners with exterior improvements. So we'll roll that out. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about brownfields and how that might help. So a little bit now focus on maybe some of your physical aspects of, of where you are. Uh, where your business is located. And then we'll have a visit from our very own Tucson Fire Department team as well. So we're gonna really mix it up on the city side to give you something new to think about as you roll into the latter part of the year. Uh, register when you see the email invite in your inbox and we'll continue to help you navigate this pandemic. Uh, you can always call our hotline at 520-837-4100 and you can check connecttucson.com for other updates and to add yourself to the newsletter list. And with that, it looks like I see thank yous. So that's what I'm going to echo is thank you all again.